Sunday, June 12, 2016. The time, 2.31 a.m. Orlando Police Department, this is Tabitha. Your call is being recorded. Yes, I live in Tampa, Florida, and my daughter just called me to tell me that there has been a shooting at Pulse. Uh, nightclub. I don't know if y'all have gotten a call on that. Yes, we have. We have officers um, over there, and we also have the fire department. They're all staging out there. Is your daughter there? Have, my daughter is there. She said she, 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 she she's apparently she's been shot twice. And okay. That's all I know. People were targeted because of who they are and who they love. It was a massive shooting. People need blood. A lot of people wanted to give blood, especially people who are gay, they wanted to help. Seeing those lines, I think it was the first time that many people realized that there was this ban. It is an area where politics and passion and bias and stigma all converge. Stigma and discrimination are not based on fact. They're based on fear. HIV is not a death sentence anymore, and it hasn't been for decades. Now we know that people who are on treatment and have their virus controlled do not transmit sexually to their sexual partners. The blood supply is usually measured by number of days of inventory on the shelf at a blood center. And they usually are comfortable if there's five to seven days of blood on the shelf. Before COVID, that if it dropped down to three days of supply, they would say, this is, we're getting to a critical point. We need to put out a call to donors. Since COVID, we were at one day supply of blood on the shelf. We have a lot of people out there who want to do the right thing. And in some cases, they can't because of regulations. I don't want the policies of the FDA to reduce the number of people. If they want to donate blood and they are at low risk for a virus or, or having tainted blood, I say let them come out.